The Lord bless you as you listen in Jesus' mighty name. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21 to 22. I want to reveal the goodness of God to a wicked man to us. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21 to 22. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he had committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he had committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he had done, he shall live. The word of God says, But if the wicked will turn from all his sins, sins that have been committed, sins that have been done already, and a condition is given there, if the wicked will turn from all his sins, if he repents of those sins, the Bible says all his transgressions that he had committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In other words, all those transgressions will be forgiven by God. As he turns away from all the sins he has committed and keep the statutes of God and obey his word. The Bible says that all his transgressions that he had committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. All his transgressions, they shall not be mentioned unto him in thoughts, in words, in writing, in action, in the future. Those transgressions shall not be mentioned unto him. And in fact, even God, who is the Almighty, will honor his word. He will not mention those transgressions unto the wicked person that has torn and has repented from all his sins. Very important. You know, as humans, because of our limited understanding, sometimes we feel that when a wicked man turns from all his sins, when a wicked man forsakes all his sins, repents of all those sins, and accepts Jesus as his Lord and Savior, we may be tempted to feel that you see, if you know you were wicked before, and then you have committed a lot of sins, so God will only uh, forgive you the small sins, those big ones that you have committed. No, God is not going to forgive that one. God will mention the big ones and then the smaller ones that you have committed, those ones can be forgiven. That's a lie from Satan. When you turn away from all your sins, no matter how big, no matter their length, no matter their breadth, no matter their height, no matter their depth, the word of God says, says all his transgressions that he had committed they shall not be mentioned unto him in thought in words in writing in action in future and in fact even god will not mention those transgressions against him you know some people um when a wicked person repents and turns unto the Lord. They say, well, <laughs> we know that God may have forgiven you, but you see, and um, but you see, we put it in writing. We know God has forgiven you quite all right, we know, uh, but we put it in writing for tomorrow's sake. That's not the word of God. The Bible says that all his transgressions, all, not one left, shall not be mentioned unto him and in fact even God that is holy 
pure and sinless says that all his transgressions shall not be mentioned unto him. All the transgression of that sister, all the transgression of that brother, all the transgression of that man, all the transgression of that woman that was lost in sin, deeply lost in sin, as he repents and turns unto God, all of them shall be forgiven. And of course, who is a wicked person? What are the things that are found in a wicked person? What is the reward for wickedness? What is man's idea of a wicked person? And what does God require from a wicked person? A wicked person is a sinner. A wicked person is one that despises God. A wicked person is one that denies that Jesus is the only Savior. A wicked person is one that opposes the word of God and opposes the voice of the Lord. A wicked person is one that despises the will of the heavenly father a wicked person is one that takes pleasure in killing and destroying others as a cloak for serving their own god in their religion there are some things that are found in a wicked person some of these things are adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies envy murders drunkenness reviling unforgiveness forgiveness with punishment at the same time you know some people they say well i love to forgive but you see when i forgive i still punish you so that you are going to learn something from the forgiveness that's not correct forgiveness must be complete total and free the same way the person that has repented has received it from the lord and of course some of the things that you found in a wicked person also are gossips backbiting oppression disrespect murmuring complaining slander selfishness self-centeredness hypocrisy secretly hindering the blessings of others condemning others negative criticisms no pity no love no kindness no mercy no consideration for others but self only accusing others to have advantage from from leaders or others bitterness tribalism enemy of other people's progress these are some of the things that are found in a wicked person and of course you have to note this very important sometimes even a true christian may be wicked in one or two ways but what is expected from that christian is to repent end of them and then continue to walk with the lord the reward for wickedness is doom destruction punishment causes evil and hell at last whether the wicked person agrees or not that is what befalls a wicked person now what is man's idea and reaction towards a wicked person naturally speaking left for man wicked people should be killed expelled from the society wicked people should be rejected abandoned to suffer that is if everything were to be left in the hands of man of course wicked people according to men should be deprived of their right they should be imprisoned tortured wicked people must reap what they sow that's what some people say jungle justice sometimes wicked people are mocked disgraced humiliated laughed at that is man for you somehow that may be correct but it is man's way finally what is God's way? How does God react towards a wicked man? What does God require from a wicked man? And of course, God is angry with the wicked every day, but he requires something from him. And what is that thing that God requires from the wicked man? Finally, 
God's required requirement from the wicked, naturally speaking, do a wicked man deserves punishment and destruction. God has something sweet and better for him to repent and turn from his evil ways and obey him. That's what God requires. That is the goodness of God. That is the kindness of God. Oh, how wonderful is God's grace to the wicked. Look at how merciful God is. God that has the full authority as one that is sinless still desires that the wicked turns rather to him than to allow himself to be destroyed. Jesus did not come to condemn us, but to save us. Even me, the preacher, if I realize that there is any wickedness in any area of my life, I repent of it too. Are you there? And you are still wicked. Don't argue with God. Don't try to reject this message by defending yourself or your evil religion. Just repent and God's mercy will come to you today. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why will you destroy your soul when there's room for you at the cross? The rapture or death may come at any time when where will you be if you refuse to repent today? Take some time to seek the Lord and it shall be found of you. Repent of your wicked ways. Turn away from all those wicked things. It's not a matter of saying, ah, I've gone so far. I've done so much evil. Look at what I've done. All those complaints and all those um, excuses is not what is going to take care of it. You come unto the Lord. You repent fully and turn completely unto God and all those sins shall not be mentioned unto you. Those sins shall not be mentioned unto you. In thoughts, they shall not be mentioned. In words, they shall not be mentioned. In writing, they shall not be mentioned. In action, they shall not be mentioned. In future, they shall not be mentioned. In eternity, they shall not be mentioned. Even God that is sinless will not mention your sins because you have repented of them. The Lord will show you mercy as you repent in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you.